Okay, today's class on fractions, we are looking at adding and subtracting fractions. So um, there are these rules here for adding and for subtracting fractions. So the first rule is if we're working with any mixed fractions, we're going to convert those mixed fractions to improper fractions. The second thing is if the denominators are different, then we have to find a common denominator. All right, next, keeping the denominator the same, we're going to add or subtract the numerators. And lastly, um, is convert your answers back to mixed fractions if necessary, and always make sure to reduce your fraction. All right, um, so to add or subtract fractions, the denominator, it has to be the same. Once it is same, then you can add or subtract the numerators and keep the denominator the same. So for example, um, if we had something like, if we had 3 over 10 plus 5 over 10, all right, the denominators are already the same. So all we have to do is add our numerators. So 3 plus 5 is 8, and we keep the denominator the same. We keep it as 10. We don't add the denominators. So our answer is 8 over 10 or 8 tenths. Next, our rule said convert it to mixed fractions if necessary. Um, our fraction is not improper, so we don't have to convert it to a mixed fraction, but we do have to reduce our fraction. All right, so we can reduce our fraction. We can divide the top and bottom. Both of them we can divide by 2, which gives me 4 over 5. All right, so our final answer is 4 over 5 or 4 fifths. All right, so that doesn't seem so bad, right? Because our denominator was already the same, 10 and 10. All right, but what if the denominators are not the same? We have to find a common denominator. So if we look here, our next question, we have 3 fifths plus 1 fourth. How are we going to get a common denominator? So remembering from last class, we have to find the lowest common multiple of 5 and 4. And if you're ever struggling and you can't find it, just multiply these two together, 5 and 4. Just multiply those two together and we get 20. All right, so our, our common denominator is going to be 20. So what I like to do is I just write, write both of my denominators. I'm showing that I'm writing them um, as 20. But how did I get from 20? On this side, I have to multiply the 5 by 4, right? 5 times 4 to give me 20. Therefore, I have to multiply the 3 times 4 as well to give me 15. Sorry, 3 times 4 is 12. 12 over 20. And on this side, I multiplied by 5, right? 4 times 5 gives me 20. And then 1 times 5 is 5. All right, I'm going to pause here and just check in with you guys. So now that we have a common denominator of 12, of 20, we can now add our numerators. So 12 plus 5 is 17. We keep the denominator the same, which is 20. All right, and check to see if you need to reduce this. We cannot reduce this any further, so our answer is 17 over 20. All right, so this example, we are adding 3 eighths plus 5 sixths. We had to find the lowest common denominator, so we are using 24. But keep in mind, if you, if you ever get stuck trying to find it, you can always multiply the 8 and 6 together. Okay, 8 times 6, so you could have used 48. But you want to try to find the lowest one. Okay, um, so 24. So how do we get from 8 to 24? We had to multiply by 3. All right, so 8 times 3 gives me 24. And therefore, I have to multiply the numerator by 3 as well. So 3 times 3 is 9. All right, on this side, how do we get from 6 to 24? I multiplied by 4. So 6 times 4 gives me 24. I have to multiply my numerator by 4 as well, so 5 times 4 is 20. All right, now we have our fractions with common denominators, so therefore we are good to go.
go ahead and add. We add the numerators, so 9 plus 20 is 29, and we keep the denominator the same, which is 24. All right, this is an improper fraction, um, so we do have to put it into mixed. As well, we have to check if we can reduce. We can't reduce here. So how many times can 24 go into 29? One time, keep the denominator the same. One times 24 is 24. We need to get to 29, so we have to add five more. All right, so one and five 24. All right, so here we have 2 thirds plus 4 fifths. We have to come up with a common denominator. So our common denominator for both of these would be 15. All right, so I had to multiply the 3 times 5 to get to 15. So therefore, I have to multiply 2 times 5 as well. That gives me 10. Here I have the 5. I have to multiply that by 3 to get to 15, so therefore I have to multiply the 4 times 3 as well, which gives me 12. All right, so now that I have common denominators, I can go ahead and add my numerators. So 10 plus 12 is 22, and I keep my denominator the same, which is 15. All right, so the last step now is, because this is an improper fraction, 22 over 15, I do have to put this into a mixed fraction. So how many times does 15 go into 22? One time, I keep my denominator the same. One times 15 is 15. I need to get to 22, so I add seven more um, to get me to 22. All right, so the answer is one and seven 15. All right, our next example here is a subtracting fraction example. So we have eight ninths minus five sixths. We came up with our common denominator of 18. Um, we already got our numerator here, 16, and we're just working on getting our numerator here. So we said 6 times 3 to get to, get to 18, so therefore we have to multiply 5 times 3, which gives me 15. All right, now we can go ahead and subtract. So we have 16 minus 15, which is 1. We keep the denominators the same, so 18. All right, so our answer is 1 over 18. All right, let's look at another example. We have 7 fourths minus 1 third. So if you guys can help me out, I need my common denominator. What would I use? 4 and 3, what can I use? 12, yes. You can use 12. All right, so 4 to 12, I multiplied by 3, so therefore 7 times 3 gives me 21. Here, I had to multiply by 4, so 3 times 4 is 12, 1 times 4 is 4, and we're just going to subtract those. So 21 minus 4 is 17, and we keep the denominator the same. Of 12. Now, um, it is an improper fraction and we have to now put it into a mixed fraction. So how many times can 12 go into 17? One time and then we keep our denominator as 12 and we'll have um, 5 as the numerator, numerator. So 1 and 5 12 is the answer. Yeah, so we have 5 eighths and 7 twelfths. We can use 24 as the common denominator. Okay, because 8 times 3 gets me to 24. So 5 times 3, that's 15. And then 12 times 2 gets me to 24. So 7 times 2 is 14. All right, once you've done that, we can go ahead and subtract the numerators. 15 minus 14, that's 1, and we keep our denominator the same, which is 24. So our answer is just 1 over 24. Okay, um, we're going to look at this next example, which is a mixed 
two mixed fractions that we're subtracting. And if we go back to our very first rule, it was to convert all mixed fractions to improper fractions. So 5 and 1 fourths, we multiply 5 times 4, which is 20, then we're going to add the 1. So we get 21 over 4. And then for our next fraction, um, again, you multiply the whole number and the denominator. So 3 times 6 is 18, plus 5, that gives me 23. So 23 over 6. Okay, so all I've done so far is just converted the mixed fractions to improper fractions. Now we can go ahead and find a common denominator. So what can we use as a common denominator for 4 and 6? Try to find the lowest one. So we're using 12 as the common denominator. Um, so here we multiplied by 3. 4 times 3 to give me 12. 21 times 3 is 63. Then here, 6 times 2 gives me 12. 23 times 2 is 46. All right, now we can go ahead and subtract. 63 minus 46, that's 17. We keep their denominators the same, which is 12. Last step, we just have to put this into uh, back into a mixed fraction because it is improper. How many times does 12 go into 17? One time. We'll keep our denominator as 12. 1 times 12 is 12. We need to get to 17, so we add 5 more. All right, so the only extra step in this example was um, we had the mixed fractions that we had to convert to improper fractions, and then our steps were all the same.